bringing the next Dion display to life. In this episode, I'm going to be getting the microcontroller to communicate to the display and basically to update just one number. That may not seem like a lot for one episode, so let me explain why there's multiple steps involved. First of all, one of the things I like to do when I'm working on a new project like this, particularly when I'm working with hardware that I haven't used before, is I like to take things one step at a time so that when I'm trying to get something working, the number of variables involved is at a minimum. If I try to do too many steps at the same time and it doesn't work, then it's a lot harder to figure out what's not working correctly. The other thing is when I'm starting a project like this, I like to try to figure out what the most efficient workflow is going to be. And as you'll see, by the time I get to the end of it, I have a very efficient workflow that's going to work very nicely. So that will allow me to develop this a lot faster and it's going to be a much more pleasant experience, therefore, to get things working. This is the arrangement I'm going to use for testing. I've got it set up for more than I'm going to start with. To start with, I just want to test the display and see if the datasheet matches what I'm expecting. So the way I have this hooked up is that I've got power, which is the red and the black, sent over to here to the breakout board, which allows me to disconnect the power and connect it again really easily. And then I've got the signal leads right here going to this section of the breakout board that has both the logic analyzer connected to it for the transmit and receive. And this is also connected to the microcontroller, but again, I'm not going to use that for the first test. What I'm going to do initially is uh, disconnect the power here, and then I'll go ahead and start the session, and then plug in the power, and then stop the session. And what I'm going to do first is uh, zoom in to that data. So you can see this is the data here. And this is the sequence I was expecting to see, which is three FF characters, followed by an 88 hex character, which says that the display is ready, and then it terminates with three more FF characters. I have this set to 9600 baud, as you can see here, which is the default speed for the display. So what this is uh, showing me is that I do have this working correctly, and now I can move on to having the code send something to the display. This is the program that I created to start with. A lot of this is just boilerplate to set everything up to begin with. The interesting part is right here. This is what sends a command. The commands for the Nextion display, it's basically a programming language. So I have a control on the screen called PV, which is the, the process value. That's the number at the top that's going to show the current temperature. Here's that process value control in the editor. And one of the things I can do before we run this in the microcontroller itself is show you that you can test it out in the debug experience of the editor. So over here, I can type pv.val equals to 120, for example. And then when I press the Enter key, you can see it updates on the screen. So I want to set the value of that to 340. And then I have to terminate it with uh, three of the FF characters because that's how the display will know it's the end of a command. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is run this. So I'll switch to the debugger tab and then just say go ahead and run. And it uh, compiles it and then it's going to download it to the microcontroller. And then once it finishes downloading, you can see that it got to the entry point here. So I'll just uh, go ahead and say continue. It gets to the breakpoint, and now when I click continue, you can see it sent the command, and now the display is showing 340. One of the things I'm going to be wanting to do as I develop this is constantly make changes to here. I'm going to change the messages that I send, etc. And that means that I have to basically create a new TFT file each time and then download that to the display. That's a lot of work and a lot of back and forth. And it turns out that the Nextion editor has a feature that allows me to get around that. 
So if I click on debug, it has this radio button here that says use MCU input. And what that means is that if I have something attached to a COM port, then I can use that instead to communicate between this and the microcontroller. I've already set that up and I'll show you it in just a second. I have a um, USB to serial device, which is right here. Um, this one right here, and you can see it's on COM6. So if I set this to COM6 and then say start, you'll see that I'm getting messages from the microcontroller that are updating the display. Let me show you how I did that. The first thing I did is I modified the program. If you look down here in the loop statement, I have a delay, so twice a second, essentially, I send this command to set the value to 250. And the reason I did it that way is because, and then I could try different things to make sure that I had the connection working between the computer and the display. So I set up PuTTY that is connected to that USB to serial device. And it's on COM6, as I mentioned, and it's running at 9600 baht. So when I click on open, oh, um, I think the next Dion editor may still have it connected. It does, so I'll click stop. And then go back to PuTTY, and I should be able to... Oh yeah, I had to reload PuTTY. And so I'll say open again. And now you can see it's showing the commands appearing here. These uh, little squiggly things here are the terminating sequence of the three FFF characters that are down here, uh, right here. This is the uh, setup that I have here. And it's a little bit different from before. I have the display off to the side. I've also taken the display wires and I've put them over here. So they're not actually connected to the microcontroller or anything else at the moment. They're just sitting over there. I put them here so that I can keep the orientation the same way if I want to move it back and forth. In its place, I've put in this USB to serial device, which is connected right there, as you can see. And I don't know if you can see it very well on the screen. I'll have to find out during editing. Right here is a LED that's flashing twice a second when it receives the signals from the microcontroller to update the display. So far, all of the communications between the Nexteon and the microcontroller have been in a fairly slow 9600 baud. One of the things I learned is that in here, according to what I've read, I should be able to type baud equals 115200. And then go ahead and save that. And now when I press debug and connect to the microcontroller, it should not work correctly because I have not updated the microcontroller code yet to work with 9600 bots. So if I click here, you'll see I'm getting garbage. So let me go ahead and switch to the microcontroller code and I'm going to change this to the same thing. So 115, oops, I have to type correctly, 115200. And then I'll go ahead and, whoops, I'm running this. So I'll go ahead and build that and then download it to the microcontroller. And then once that's up and running, which it is now, I'll switch back to the next Dion and see if that works. And lo and behold, this is really cool. So what this means is just with a really simple change in here, I can change the default baud rate of the display so the communications can be a lot faster between the microcontroller and the display. Now that I have things set up so I can do efficient development, I can get to the, the work of actually making it do interesting things, such as having the buttons actually do things, being able to set the desired temperature, being able to set how long the different cycles should be, um, having it run through the cycles, and then having it communicate with external devices like the pneumatic solenoids that are actually going to move the cylinders, such as the injection cylinder and the cylinder used for clamping and unclamping the multaffs. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, and commenting below. And also, if you are a subscriber and want to be notified when I have new videos, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. 
Thanks again for watching and see you next time.